think this is going. I'm not really sure. Oh, look at that. New screen sharing live. Okay. Uh, let's see what I am doing. Oh, I am streaming live. Okay, that's good. Um, well, folks, howdy. <laughs> it's snowing outside. It's really cold. And so I thought I would uh, share some things that I have found out and found out in my search for for the thrill of the chase. So I just thought I would throw, oh, okay, I just thought I would throw a whole bunch of stuff up that I've been using. Now there's only like about mm, five tools that I've been using to uh, find various aspects of the search. Now he says that he, um, well, let me get my stuff. Let me get this all set up over here. Mm. <clears throat> For instance, I find that some of the things that are missing seem to be really important. Uh, definitely, some of the things that are missing out of the out of the book, obviously, would be the entire. Boy, I, tell you. I need a distraction. Apparently, I don't have my stuff together good enough to do this. Now we'll give it a shot. Let's see if I have this all right here. Come on. Shocked on why it's not right here in front of me. There it is. What happens is under pressure, I tend not to see words, which is why filling out applications is really hard for dyslexic people. Under the pressure, you know, you fill out the application, is just really, words just disappear off the page. It's really uncomfortable. So, anyways. Tools that I have used to find various clues and hints throughout the poem. One is make your own index, right? And the more detailed it is, the better. So I'm showing down this side the page number. You know what I can do is I can actually show you. Uh-oh. I'm pretty sure I can show. Let's go to, yeah, I can go to this. And then I can click on this, and you should be able to see this and see if it's going to load. So what you're seeing right here is my own index. So this would be the, you know, I've got, I, I've gone through 20-something odd versions. So this is version 21.1. Um, I figured out, you know, well, I just matched up. Here's the page numbers. And then I wrote down the first capital letter or whatever the first couple of lines were. And then and the alphabetical point at where you know I is I thought it was I still and important sometimes they match up and I thought well maybe they're really trying to push the letter I and that was on uh, uh, you know I is number nine uh, on the uh, alphabetical table right there you know so I thought it would be good to set up some various tables of information as you're going along here if I can actually do anything hey how about that so what I did is I put the alphabet here for quick accessibility and um, second I wrote down the chapter number on where I thought it would land and of course then I wrote down the chapter name and then most importantly the uh, what do you want to uh, postmark having a brain day so the postmark where the blanks are are there there are no postmarks like for uh, uh, no biddies no place for biddies. There are there is no postmark, but the next two are there. Interestingly enough, that some of these where it says Wednesday the twenty fifth on that day may not actually be the twenty fifth. It may be a day or two off, and there may be some significance to that that he's trying to get you to find. Don't know, but nonetheless, this is your whole periodic table right here. Well, excuse me, your whole index to the. Forest Fen book, Thrill of the Chase. This would be where there are no postmarks. I collectively get the word William spelled out. I thought that would be a, I thought that was an obvious uh, hint towards a keyword. And then it goes on and on. For instance, where 39 on the postmark shows up is on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different locations it shows up. Uh, I took my brother Skippy as kind of this neutral 
location. thought it was really interesting that my brother Skippy is 1314 North Main, and then the uh, alphabet and chapter thing seems to kind of go right along with that. So maybe he's trying to give you a hint that that's the actual um, order. You know, it's this is the 12th one or something. I don't, I don't know. But um, so that's that would be that little bit of uh, stuff. Next, I'm going to go over to the this deal here. See if this works. It's going to work, but then some other stuff's going to happen. So we have to close this. Some little bug that every time I go to here, photos open. All right, so here we are looking at the thrill of the chase. Now I'm going to go to page 18 and 19 because I found that this page right here definitely looked like it was hinting at this. So this being my periodic table, which I felt was really a big hint here. Notice there are no page numbers. Page numbers are missing. And this is page 18 and 19. Uh, on the periodic table, there's a row of 18 across. And then you'll notice down here that it is. it says A and R. I thought that was you know A and R, which are both K in 19, 18, 19. Just seemed like there was some, some hints about periodic table since especially since Skippy here excuse me since Mr. F Mr. Fenn actually lands on titanium and that's the thing he talks about in that book um, I wonder you know there's probably more hints about that father uh, I thought would show up kind of like uh, Krypton which is interesting and then if you go one two three four one two three four what is it one two three four fifth one, two, three, four, five. You got SN. See how he's kind of down? SN is Skippy. Now, sure enough, on page 50 is the chapter about Skippy. So just off the top, looks like there's a few things that look like it could be hinting towards this. Especially page 15. Here's page 15. Now, is this what he's referring to as in, you know, the bold? If you've been, what, what does he say here? And with my treasures bold, in a big comma. So P15 really is P15 on the periodic table. So it just seems like maybe he's hinting at something there. There's probably more to it. There's probably more stuff that might give us more hints. But I mean, it really, you know, I just thought it was interesting. There's no page number on this page. And it's 15, P15, okay. But then 79 is the 79th word if you count from the bottom. So what does this mean? I always took this as a sample of what you should do to the poem. This is uh, hinting at some in, you know, important numbers. For instance, it says B42, and it is actually 42 degrees. So I thought, wow, that's really, really interesting. And I did that from SIT because it seemed like a very uh, significant word uh, for, I don't know, a bunch of different reasons. Um, uh, let's see. Moreover, on this 79th word, on the ninth line from the bottom, fifth from the top, okay. Uh, the word year, I thought that was interesting. Year over here comes up with nine. So we got the word year twice on here, and there's two different years. We have year nine, that'd be 1939. We know that's a big deal. And then let's say 2005. That also shows up, doesn't it, as a postmark? 79 and then 1935. So I'm wondering, or excuse me, 1936 and 78. Perhaps these numbers on years are relevant. Who knows? Uh, written is actually on line 10. So perhaps there's some stuff um, that, that's relevant. I don't know. I just found this as a very important page to be kind of a way of hinting at what you might want to do with the poem. right? I mean, we're seeing stuff like the end. That's in the poem. Um, the word will, it shows up on here twice. Interesting that it's 42. I thought that was kind of neato. From the bottom up, it's 42. From the top down, it's like it's 72. So you get a set of numbers if you count from the top down. From the bottom up, you get two sets of numbers. Thought maybe that's what he's asking us to do on the big poem over here. 
So I have numbered the poem from the top down and have found some numbers to be interesting. So the poem clearly is going to be something you need for the, you know, for inform for details on what you're looking for, right? So that's that is one one aspect that I have found. Okay. So I have you know lots of ideas on that. All right. So what else do we have? So. He's also, when he's flying his airplane, he says that he he liked to have turned, he turns off his instrument panel and he likes to fly so many miles before he even turn, needs to turn anything on. Well, when you turn off your instruments, this does not go off. This is your compass on your airplane. There's This doesn't go off. There's, uh, you know, backup versions of this all over your plane. So when he talks about two people keep a secret if one of them is dead, dead reckoning might be what he's hinting at. So where would we find this kind of stuff in the poem or the book that would say this is relevant? Well, where it gets really interesting is right in here. You've got the inside numbers, which is at, at 6,400, 3,200. This is more of the, uh, um, what do you call it? More of the inside, 6,400. It's the, uh, what do you call it? More more precise, detailed kind of a thing that he's got. And that is this compass right here. That is your typical, this is the inside ring of this compass right here. That's what we're, that's what we're dealing with, okay? So to, so this is just an expanded version, which is available on Wikipedia through um, uh, Compass, Compass Rose, I think. This is where that shows up. Periodic Table shows up on Wikipedia as uh, a download, free download as well. So. So, right here would be chapter 23. This would be where chapter 23 starts. That would be page 127. So here's 22, here's 23. So, interesting how the numbers on the outside are giving us chapter numbers on the inside. That happens more than once. So I think he's really trying to hint at something. Notice that we also have N O. And S now on German compass that this is has always just they've always just left it as O for east, west is west but O is definitely east. Now that that's that's interesting and trippy and all that stuff because of what we find in the poem. I mean S O that's what you have right here. The poem clearly says S O, and more than once. So if you recall, shows up you know, many times. So now, as I sit here, I mean, the word so, if you re shows up on so many chapters, it can't be just an accident, right? And then we have, we have O as East. So we got go, 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 so, so. And then we have this big blank spot. I wonder what that's hinting towards, right? This definitely looks like a pool table, doesn't it? And then pockets. Pockets are on pool tables. Well, I wonder if there'd be any kind of hinting around at, at that. Right? I mean, here he is with his hand in his pocket, and we're looking at pockets on this. I mean, that would definitely be like stuff a 12-year-old or a little kid would kind of poke out or poke out, would, would look for, right? So just thinking that maybe the page number 145, excuse me, 144, might be some kind of important. Um, takes us right there before chapter 24. So, it just seems like there's a bunch of stuff like that. Now, these are the kind of... Now, notice, by the way, that 79, right there, on page 15, shows up right here, right? Okay, so, I wonder if it would show up any other place with any kind of importance to what I'm doing. Let's just see if we can't find it on. Let's say page what we got here seven now I found page seven really interesting. this page six excuse me page six this is n7 this would be seven like n7 this would be page six like c6 on the periodic table so what would you what do we see right so c6 n7 interesting that we have 79 showing up at least twice, maybe you know, on here, at these locations. I haven't counted these to see if this actually lands on 79. 
Interesting, it says 80 over here. But really, what really gets me is this word right here, hound. Hound is really important to me because that's what I'm seeing out there on the field in my location. And not only am I seeing it in in my location, you know, because he talks about hound, I'm seeing at 7 degrees. So when I'm actually in this location in the field and I look up at that, it is north 7 degrees. North 7 degrees being right here. And then it has 14 and 0. So these other numbers play into it. And I haven't gone into what that is or what that would mean. But look at that. N, O, and S. N, O, and S. That's just what we just saw right here. So another way of of giving you the same north, east, and south, north, east, and south, could be with 14, 15, and 32. What's fascinating about 32 is it is 32 on the per, on the uh, compass, right? So at 32, north, south, and what do you know? It is right there, and with 74, arsenic. You know, arsenic and oil, lace, Garrett. Maybe that might be a way that he's hinting about this word. And that is, as, as I have gone alone in there. So this word right here is a very, very important aspect to the chase because it is the very first word in the poem. As I have gone alone in there. Fascinating numbers that we're seeing here. Real interesting. I mean, look, I is 126. 126 is an important number because that takes you to chapter 22. Well, actually, I think it's uh, 21. No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I was looking at this. We have to get the other. See, that's why you need these papers. That's why you need all these papers, you know, at the ready. Because you're going to go, hey, isn't that the same as a chapter? Well, then you can look it up because you've got the, you've got your own you've got your own deal. So we can look at page 26, 126, right? Isn't that what we just saw? 126. Well, what do you know? That's where the, the page that the, the uh, treasure starts on. And look at that. That's right in there. Is that in as? No, as is 74. In. Interesting. I, 126, is page number 126, which is where the gold page starts, right in here, right? Golden Moor, 126. That's the picture of the of the treasure, and then you've got the uh, the postmark that's on that, right? Boom. Don't I have a blowed up picture of the postmark? I should. Well, I'm not being as organized as I like to. I'd say the other only other item that you probably want to use is going to be the Greek alphabet. Now the Greek alphabet seems to come up all over the place. Look what theta. I mean, that's just like the, the thrill of the chase, which I found fascinating. And look at TH is also 9. So, I mean, theta is 9 over here, and then TH is 90. Wow, that really quickly gets you to Einsteinium, which is 99. Look at that, 252. That's the same uh, little, what do you call those, scrapbook. 252 is the one where he talks about Willie and 61 degrees. 61 degrees being p.m. and 145. And that's the same page we saw the man with his hand in his pocket. So there's a bunch of stuff in here, you know, a.m., p.m., f.m. These are, you know, another way of saying east could be 90 or 90 or, I don't know, there's a bunch of possibilities there. We're seeing a bunch of interesting things that are laying around just in the open, All right? I mean, one of the the uh, thing I'm currently looking for is the is the postmark that's on that that is the, the same postmark is on the father on the banco and the treasure page. Those have the same, believe it or not, postmark. So we're finding the postmarks have a big significance. I mean, Ramblin Pan played her killer little video of Mr. Fenn saying that they were significant and that they were not put there by accident. That they were not just happens to be there. Not by any chance. 
Well, this is me looking at looking through papers and failing. Yeah, yeah. it's getting colder and colder. We're gonna have to turn on more heaters. Let's see if I have anything over here. Nope. Ah, where did I lose it? Where did I put a little deal? In other words, these ha these postmarks that are in the book. I have photographed, photographed it, blew it up so we could see it, so it would stand out. Here's another dog. See the dog here, the dog here? This is where the image originally came from, right? So I would imagine that the, uh, the fact that this is June 4th, 1921 might have some kind of significance. That gives us a killer date, right? And this is the same page with a postmark of 13 and 14 in North, Maine. There's got to be similarities, connections of these sort of things all around throughout the whole thing. Well, yeah, um, I need to find that postmark. So this is this is one of my versions. I have many versions, of course, of the poem and what I'm seeing. Did you all notice that the, the rock itself that's in here, the little gold coin, definitely has a face? Isn't that cool? Look at that nose. Definitely have a face right there, and he's looking... You know, out up into here where we have the word captain, the words IN definitely make a triangle. The word red definitely stands out for me because the word red is in so many different places. So, I don't know. I just think there's, I think there's some hints laying around that have been overlooked because grand assumption are made that Mr. Finn wouldn't do that or a comment seems that we should deny using these tools. Um, I think, you know, the more tools, the better. I mean, definitely you want to count the words in the poem. You want to highlight. I mean, isn't it interesting the word and is all straight in a row like that? Boom. And then if you highlight it, it sure looks like sheet music. Doesn't that look like music? Da, 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 da. Da 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 or da 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 this might be um, you know uh, you know down in the valley or some kind of some kind of tune. Uh, I just found it you know interesting like that. The fact that that if you go from if you lie if you if you go from will, will and will, you get a whole set of interesting lines. Interesting if you draw lines, you know, through here like uh, like if this for instance, if this is if this is representational of some kind of sheet music or, or music, then these would be strings that would be the notes, right? I mean, cool when you go from the, the capital A and it goes right between the L's. I thought that was trying to tell me something. And it goes right between the T's. So you'll notice that this line traverses and it hits right over here. And it does it again between the it and the that, right between those two T's. So it's a way of giving you this line and that line as maybe significant, right? Maybe that's something you should pay attention to, that these are important. And then it keeps on going down, hits that comma, right? Lines up to that comma, hits the I between the two T's again in title. So this one line traverses the whole deal. And perhaps those words along that line have a significance over something else. Um, see how meek right here? Bang! Look at that. No place for me right away. Now this is from the period of cold right here, and it hits the, the period in seek, and it traverses all the way to the I in will. So it goes from dot to dot. Now I have found this in other documents throughout this that, that, that was worth doing. So from the period in cold to the I and will, it traverses the word meek. Now there must be some kind of relevance to that. What would be the how would that how would that matter? Well, Willie Nelson has got a song called No Place for Me. Now that right away takes you to Willie Nelson, right? And Willie Nelson's guitar is triggered. <laughs> so we're gonna have to think that. Roy Rogers, who sang Cool, Cool Water, suddenly these things kind of come together real fast, right? And I got to think that maybe music is, is well involved in this. Interesting that the, 
that the B-side, you know, like he says, B-side by campfire, the B-side is Lumberjack. You know, what would be the relevance of that? Well, how about, how about Hopalong Cassidy does a movie called Lumberjack, and his name is William Boyd. So we're starting to collect this deal, William, over and over and over and over. Starts to make you wonder. The movie was released on 28th, which is the same as 9. Interesting. Don't know what that means. 44. Maybe there's some information there. That's a bunch of fours. April is four, and it's 1944. So we got three fours right there. I don't know. Maybe there's something relevant to that. I have found that this links to stuff, but interesting that uh, the place your heart calls home. And that would be a song that was part of the soundtrack. How about that? Lumberjack, no place for me. I mean, it seems like there could be some kind of significance. Now, look at that time. Wow, right? Maybe that time is, is some kind of relevance. Let's just jaunt over here. OG. Oh, look at that. T and OG. Isn't that a lot like T with Olga? It's one. T with Olga ends on page 117. Father on the Banco. Chapter 21. Starts on OG. Very interesting, I, I thought. Especially since the tin is also the same as this. So the weight, the heavy load, tin is 118, 118. And we have 118 showing up here on Lumberjack. What would be the significance of this, I wonder? Perhaps it kind of coalesces into something. Perhaps it's trying to nudge you into understanding a little bit of, uh, of what's going on with Willie Nelson. I wonder if there was anything else that would be a hint towards Willie Nelson, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe something. Let's see what we can find here. Let's see if I can't dig up a couple of things that I got laying around. Well, no place for me. Here it is. The other thing we see up there is the word rainbow connection. Well, we see the word rainbow. The rainbow and the treasure, right? Fourth word from the bottom is rainbow. Well, look at this. We have Willie Nelson's album called The Rainbow Connection, and it's Paint by Numbers. Well, what else have we heard Paint by Numbers? We heard Paint by Numbers in Robin Williams in uh, Good Will Hunting when, when uh, Will tells Robin, you know, uh, what's up with the, you know, the guy in the boat? And he says, you know, that's a funny thing, that Chief, that's all Paint by Numbers. So what we're seeing is hints in movies that also play up on this. Uh, this is also the same song that Kermit the Frog sings, by the way. Just thought this was really interesting. Paul Williams wrote this song. And then, interesting that the, uh, see what my connection with Nick, Mickey, Mickey Newberry, some of the songs in here I found interesting. Uh, wise, uh, old me. So there was something, a few things interesting in there. Sitting by my juniper fire. Interesting that uh, Jennifer Juniper, which is what I thought this song was after, has got the B-side as Poor Cow. What a trip. Um, more of a trip that it is the label is Pi N7. What? What a trip! Mickey Most. And this is all about this thing about poor cow and well, it just seemed like a way of mentioning uh, Jenny and we get that N7. So, Davio finding connection, right? Well, what if we found what if, what if I like the what if. Let's have a little, let's go, let's, let's go a little off the rails. What if you're out there and you see this dog face? You are out, you are out there and you find this. All of your hits and clues take you to a place where you have found a freaking uh, dog face. Well, right away I thought, um, you know, hound dog, right? Hound dog, right there. Well, I found out that it was written by, and originally written by this, this woman named Mama Thornton. So when you look up Mama Thornton, her real name is Willie May Thornton. Now, we know Willie is important. We're looking at Willie the dog. Wouldn't you say this might be Willie the dog right there? And if it's if this song right here, which, by the way, Elvis made this a hit. But she made this a hit before Elvis in 53. Elvis comes along and makes that a hit later on. Etc. Et but I mean, you see in this rock, you're seeing May as in uh, what's her name, the janitor lady, uh, May comes up in the book. Um, May also comes up in a couple other places, uh, like uh, 
Well, for instance, MAY is a kind of a big, big name in, in, in a long time ago. <laughs> As I'm trying to dig up a few other pieces of information. So here we have, here we have Big Mama Thornton. Woo! Big Mama Thornton, sing it. And she is, her name, Willie Mae Thornton. And she sings Hound Dog. And look at that. The B side is Nightmare. Found the interesting that the length on that 252. Well, what else is 252? As I scramble for my handy dandy periodic table. Well, what do you know? Einsteinium, isn't it? Yeah, how about that? Einsteinium, the weight, just the heavy load is 252. And that shows up over here. Well, that's very, very interesting. Here's another interesting thing. Is this airplane is called the Winnie May? This airplane is called Winnie May, and you're looking at Wiley Post. That's right, Wiley Post. Wiley Post is the father of the pressurized suit. He is a really big deal, this guy. He is an aviation, you know, historical figure. Okay? Forrest Fenn, when he talks about his pressurized suit and he's flying, yeah. You can directly go along straight to this cat right there. He is why Forrest is able to fly that jet that height. Okay? The Winnie May. Winnie May is the name of his airplane. So Wiley. And we're looking at Post. He is the guy that died with Will Rogers. That's right. He dies with Will Rogers in Alaska in 1935. Two years later, in 37, they build this big monument in Cheyenne. That's right, Cheyenne Mountain. And it is called the Shrine of the Sun. That seems to me a lot like where you're looking for uh, a blaze. This clue, the sun and gold, all words like that equal blaze. Well, what do you know? Here we are. Cool number, the 2175. I thought that was really neat. But mostly the address of the place is, is, 20, is 4250. Okay, I say. How does that, how does that, what does that do for us, Dave? Well, the airplane is 105. That's his, the tail number, the wing number, whatever you want to call it. When you see tails wagon, this would be what that refers to. And 105, which by the way is DB, which is another way of listen and hear, because DB is the measurement of the sound. So what 105 and 42 put you in a place in Wyoming. <laughs> we put you into this place in Wyoming, as a matter of fact. This is BLM land. This is BLM land. So that little triangle, right? Where have we seen that before? Does that sound familiar, right? Does that seem familiar to anybody? A face and a triangle? Where have we seen a face and a triangle? I think it was page here. There's your face, yeah, that little nose silhouette, and there's your golden triangle. And the golden triangle, you'll notice that this eye is in the middle of this circle. So it looks like he's trying to tell us to, what, get a, like a piece of pie, like uh, maybe some measurements or something, maybe a coordinate or something, I don't know. Interesting, these lines actually land on words up there. You know, interesting, just the basic, look at between the heels, between the nose, it actually will launch you over to other words over here, right? Between the heels, between and his nose, will take you over here to other words, like maybe found. So I'm asking you all to kind of use these tools and see what you find, and maybe we land at the same place, right? So I got Wiley Post and Will Rogers. Willie Nelson's guitar is called Trigger. <laughs> Trigger, the most famous horse in the world. There's Trigger right there. Trigger is 15.3 hands high. You know, like page 15. Thought maybe that was some kind of significance there. I don't know. So, just saying that that's these are some of the things that I have found that were standing out 
in my face. You know, that's the that's the face that I'm out out there. This is Road 61. Schoolhouse Rock is over here. This is uh, Road 61, uh, like 61 degrees he talks about. And between here and the road is a mile. Between here and there is way less than a mile. Uh, this is Pyramid Mine. Uh, pyramid Mine, like Bill, Dollar Bill, there's a pyramid on there. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. There's more stuff. I tell you what, there's lots more stuff. But I thought these things right here were a good a good bunch of information to take you to get you down to the to somewhere. You know what I mean? It just, you just can't go with the ambiguity of a well, you know, some kind of brown how a brown something, right? Well what would be brown? Right? Maybe we should look at brown real quick. What well, what what would what about brown? Would would do anything for us, right? I mean, by the way, you got to look at this. This is really important. You see this guy here? Look at his name. His name is Hootie William Ledbetter. Now, if you're any kind of rock and roller, you know this name right here, Ledbetter. Now, where did you seen Ledbetter in the poem? I mean, have you? Doesn't it sound uh, e even remotely familiar? Doesn't it sound like you've heard that before? Well, yes, you have. Will lead. Will lead. That's also lead, right? Well, this is William Ledbetter. William Ledbetter would be the father of rock and roll. This individual right here was really an astounding individual. Uh, and what do you know? He died at the age of 61. How about that? Um, he is a big time uh, influence to all rock and roll, period. Period. Uh, he influenced pretty much everyone, every bit of rock and roll that we know definitely is influenced by this cat right here. Here's what I was looking for. Look at that. This is the postmark on, uh, you know, they're all different, but this one right there, isn't that amazing? Yeah, you got one, you got zero, three, nine. Bang, right there. And he definitely says N7. That's just thick as anything on there. Clearly unmistakable, right? Well, what if, what about that zero, three, nine? What about that zero, three, nine? Well, I would imagine that's what wise is. If you've been wise and you use this right here, wise, right? So this wise right here is what takes you to let's say chapter 21, well that's Father on the Bonco. Uh, well maybe there, if you're, if I'm right about this, Davio, there should be a way to, there should be a way of proving that. I couldn't agree more. Let me clear my screen. Let me get uh, some pages up here that will help us show you where the periodic table lands right away. Now I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to bring in. Let me get this clicky clicky share screen so you guys can see what I am seeing. Okay. So this is the uh, iMovie I am working on. But let's get to the whys, right? Let's get to where we find whys. So just a heavy load. So look, we got 39. Well, what if we go, and that's all over this page. I mean, my key word is clearly William, right? And then you're seeing Billy at the bottom of the page. That's the type of William. Uh, Wiley Post, of course. Well, here we are on page 39. Maybe I should make this bigger. Uh-oh. Well, I can't steer around like this. So we're going to have to do this. We're going to speed things up. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we got to do it from this direction. So here is POW. If you've been wise, right? So we got all these crazy numbers. Well, let's go. Let's go back to here where we could start. Let's start with. Um, let's start with wise. Oop, let me get caught up. Okay, so we are. This is chapter eight. Okay, chapter eight. Now look at that. We got Billy at the bottom. And when you know it's June 6th, that's interesting. So here's here's page 39. 
page three niner right there interesting that the very first line the eighth word how about that that eighth word is actually eight now that can't be a co that's just what is going on here is that a coincidence could that be just a coincidence that page that that page right there I mean that just seems that's is that a coincidence I mean, that seems like a few things kind of coincidentally lining up there, right? That would be the 88 we're looking for. So then there should be some kind of evidence if we're right about the about chapter 21. So we got page 88. Hmm. Because he definitely says Y's, as in multiple Y, as in more than one Y, right? So if we go to chapter 21... There might be something that would hint at that, you know? I don't know. There's more than 44 words. All right? What do we see? You see in a circle? A circle on this side of the page together, and then one on the opposite. Yeah, I know. That's kind of weird. Kind of reaching. But that's exactly what you see here. On the 8 o'clock, the two O's are together. And then over here, you're seeing that the the O on 1 is clearly pushed over onto the one side. And look at this. We're on page 18, 118. All right, we're on page 118. Let's see. 118. Just seems like there's a few things, right? So, how can this be possible? How could I have landed on a place out here when he's, when he, when he's, you know what I mean? There's a lot of parts. I mean, we're looking at stuff that, that clearly talks about hound dog and that's, and it's mismet, you know, there ain't nothing but a hound dog. And that comes from, uh, you know, uh, Billy, or what's her name, Willie, they call her uh, Mama Thornton. So Mama Thornton is the one that writes Hound Dog. And the numbers of all that, I mean, uh, we're landing on the same kind of number. I'm, it's clearly overwhelming. So anyways, I just thought I'd put all this stuff out here, see what you all had to say. Um, oh, I have totally been unable to read any kind of chat. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, am I, I am doing this live, and I haven't put out any any chat thing at all. Let's see. Like it's really overwhelming. Well, whoops, 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 whoops. Uh, postmarks. Uh, clearly William. There you go. Hey, JK Pioneer, Captain, Captain Marble, Redneck. There you go. Yeah, here we go. Here's the bloody snow. We're back into it. Uh, page 15th is the arsenic page. Yeah. Definitely, there's like uh, uh, Arsenic and Old Lace. That's a movie worth looking up. And then the numbers of that, I bet you will find, uh, will uh, uh, line out. Um, um, that's right. Your your uh, compass works no matter what's going on on the screen there. Uh, what am I doing? I am not letting you see what I am seeing. <laughs> so if I'm going to do this, I should do this. All right, let's ditch this. Ah! Yep. There we go. So now I can see you. Now I've got. Now we got that, and I can see this. All right. So any other question? I'm looking for questions and stuff like that. So stuff to think about, right? Periodic table, or a may captain. Yeah, Gatlin Ghost has got the or a may. Or a may. Um. Definitely comes up. Or a may would be the 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 the, the janitor woman. And then we see May show up as the original writer of the sound of the song Hound Dog. And I'm in a location where I am clearly looking at a hound dog. So, welcome to Davio Brain. It's um, all, kinds of, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, it's like Wile E. Coyote. Beep, beep, for sure. Um, gold Mugger Dude. I'm 
not a dollar bill. <laughs> I'm an unpaid bill. I like that bill. So I definitely think the word bill, will, all these kind of things become, uh, you know, something you should pay attention to. So I have I have a lot more, but I wanted to share the tools with you guys so you could so you could apply them to what you've got and see where subtleties and coincidences start crashing together. Um, because I believe that is the, the, the subtlety he did there. Uh, Bill is definitely William all the way. Uh, I used to be Big Willie, but I grew up. They call me William. See? Exactly. Um, do I catch these movies? Yes. As a matter of fact, if you watch Goodwill Hunting, there is a critical scene. I wonder if I can actually do this. Oh, I bet you I can. Um, watch this. Let's see. I'll say uh, bench in Good Will Hunting. And it's a very famous, um, very famous scene. Very, very famous scene. Oh, it's actually going to work. So let's see if I can't do two things at once. I might. So here it is. Uh, let's see. I gotta make sure I don't have. And it's a very famous. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Um, that would be bad. Okay. So these, this line in this movie is where Robin the doctor sits down on the bench, father on the banco. I mean, we're really seeing this incredibly iconic scene of this movie with Robin Williams. By the way, he played Popeye. So when he talks about Wimpy Burgers, he's talking about Popeye. Popeye is a one-eyed sailor. Well, Wiley Post, that pilot, he is has one eye as well. Um, the Good Witch in... Oh, here's Trigger. The Good Witch in um, The Wizard of Oz, she has one eye. The, the, he's, he's, you know, sub, in, in a, in a sub code, he, he brings up the one eye. And the, and the capital letter I on certain pages is prolific. I think I've counted up to 27 times he used the letter I on one page. Now, and not on other pages. So, little things like that. Now, that would be the very definition of subtlety. Right there, right? Um... Also in Goodwill Hunting, so this is you should look this up on your own and, and, and look at this. It's fantastic. He talks about how he kept he stayed up and he couldn't sleep, and then um, you know he he got over it because he realized that you there, you can only learn so much from books in life, right? You're gonna understand my life by reading um, uh, Tales of the Crypt, no, by reading um, stories about Yosemite, uh, no. You have to go there. You have to understand what it is to, to be that, to, to, know, to know what that is. You think we can understand um, Robin uh, and, and the struggles he went through? No, you really can't. You really can't walk a mile. It's walk a mile in his shoes. There's a, the, the, the statement that he's making here is that you have to, life is for living. Um, you know, what's that? Here's the, the last part. I'm in. But you don't want to do that, do you, sport? No, sport. So check this out. Right? Do you think I know the first thing about how hard your life has been? How you feel? Who you are? Because okay. I did Oliver Twist. Because of Oliver Twist. That was the movie. Right? My favorite movie, Oliver. Right? So would you know Will's life just from reading that? Would you make those assumptions? We're kind of living that today. So I really saw this movie as something that Forrest really wanted to communicate. I really think he was trying to communicate a whole bunch of other movies. Um, for instance, let's watch this. I found this really interesting because he uses Robert Redford more than once, right? A river runs through it, right? We always wondered how that that movie seems like it just fits with this right it would just fit with this whole forest thing so a river runs through it 
this film. Now, what, what you're seeing, oh, you guys can't see this because I hit the wrong freaking button. All right, stop this. We're going to bail out of this. And then we're going to go over to the browser. So now you're seeing the browser. This is a river runs through it. What's fascinating is the runtime. Look at that runtime right there. 123. 1, 2, 3. So, wow, what an interesting number. That really kind of stands out. Um, where else have we seen that number? Well, let me show you. A river runs through it. Um, you must know this movie is a real great fishing movie. Forrest would have loved this flick, obviously. This is definitely all over Forrest's wheelhouse, right? Um, the other place that we see this number, one, two, three, is, oh, we got to throw this away because it has not happy, bam, right here. So this is page one, two, three. This whole page of fishing. A river runs through it. What do you know? And I found this page to be all about east. I mean, look at that. It's clearly making a big E, right? This is the middle part. It's making a big E. Big east if you turn the book sideways. So page one, two, three. River runs through it right there. Bang. So that's Robert Redford. Where else does Robert Redford come show up? In the movie The Natural. The Natural is a movie about Ted Williams. Who is Ted Williams? Well, if you're not a baseball fan, you would not know. I mean, you, re okay. you really have got to be a baseball fan to know about Ted Williams. But Ted Williams is a really, 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 really big deal. I am cleaning up my screen. Uh, what are we sharing? Are we sharing this screen yet? No, we're going to go right here. We're going to share this screen right here so I can show you what is relevant of Ted Williams. Well, several things. Let's just get right on over to it. Zoom around. Come on, Ted. Where are you? Here's Ted. Ted Williams is what made Fenway Park great. Look at this. Section 42, row 37, seat 21. Aren't we looking for 21? 21 is Father on the Bronco. How about that? This is known as the only red seat in Fenway Park. Ted Williams hit the ball 502 feet. Remember 500 feet? We heard that before. So this would be uh, Fenway Park. Are you kidding me? Fenway Park. Hello. Ted Williams, 42. All the numbers that we know about and the color red printed right there. Tapping the dashboard of the blinking red light, which means he's not getting hypoxia or whatever that's called from flying his airplane. Absolutely. Fenway Park. You can apply this to your field and it should work. Father on the Bronco, that would be the bench. That would be home plate. We're seeing home on Father on the Bronco. Maybe there's a few other, what, section triple one? Section triple one? That must be something. I mean, look, it's right here. How about that? And what do you know? It lands on 15. What's going on? Red socks? Where have we heard this whole thing about socks? Didn't he mention something about socks before? I think he did. Do you guys remember what that was? Well, let me see here. That's this. We're gonna if you got yeah, you guys can still still see the screen. So we're gonna go over here. Remember he says those cats were hanging like socks? Right? Those cats were hanging there like wet socks I think it's socks the cat I have to say socks the cat and what do you know socks the cat actually shows up and here is socks the cat well, what's the big deal about socks the cat well socks the cat belonged to the 42nd president yes that's right Bill Clinton Bill you mean as in William 
That's right. Old Bucky Bill here, Clinton. Now, what about old Bill Clinton, Dave? Big deal. That's the 42nd president. Yeah, between two bushes. But something about old Bill Clinton. Something about old Bill Clinton. Watch this. Here's Billy Clinton right here. Ho! What's his name? It's Jefferson William Blythe the third. Huh. The third. Would have to come up more than one time to be relevant, right? I'd imagine that would have to come up more than once for the third to be relevant. Well, how about how about Dancing with the Stars? How about Dancing with the Stars? Who was the guy in Dancing with the Stars? Oh, it's Emmett Smith the third. He's the one that won the third season, and his number was 22. How about that? Just thought that was kind of interesting. And he is a three-time Super Bowl champion. He's a big deal. But he won that freaking Dancing with the Stars third season, and there's the third. So we're starting to see an accumulation of threes that show up, right? Thought that was kind of interesting. So that's maybe that's why he mentioned that he was watching this Dancing with the Stars stuff, right? I thought maybe that would be what was going on there. Now we also have heard from well we want we want to do the we want to get rid of Emmett. Now we'll leave Emmett up. What we want to do is we want to say well we want to we want to I'm trying to get you over to some information over here but before we even go over there we got to go over here okay so we want to go over here to the natural the natural uh, was a Robert Fred Robert uh, Redford movie okay now this movie according to Robert Redford is based on a young Roy Hobbs. Roy Hobbs. Now, this character is based, if you'll notice, his jersey number is 9. And he, and it's the Knights, you know, that's the, the Knights we see at night. We have all kinds of stuff in here. So, Roy Hobbs is directly, according to Robert Redford, based on Ted Williams. Now, how how is this relevant to anything well let's let's take a little let's take a little wander down through a few things and I'll show you what I mean so Roy Hobbs right there we go there's Roy Hobbs right there there might be a reason he is actually giving us that deal so what you're seeing here is I mean look at that Charlotte Brown so we're looking at Charlie Brown characters. Now you think the House of Brown might have something to do with Charlie Brown. You would think maybe there would be something that would be relevant. Well, we we see the word Brown right there, so that's interesting. Uh, we got we got a little red-haired girl. That's cool. We got something called Number Five, one of his characters. That's pretty strange. But look at this. This is Roy, and this is a uh, uh, this is this character was based on basically. Roy Hobbs, according to uh, uh, everything you can read about about um, about Charlie Brown and stuff like that. Shut up, leave me alone. We're hitting Beagle. We're seeing. You're gonna find a whole bunch of stuff about all these. Look at that, Peggy Jean, right there, Peggy Jean. So there's a whole bunch of interesting little characters that have to do with uh, possibly our story that he's trying to get there. I mean, look at this. Royanna Hobbs, uh, yeah, got a, I got a feeling, you know, Mr. Schultz was giving nods to various things in history. Now, what's in, well, how we, how do we know, uh, you know, Charlie Schultz and, and his little beagle dog has got anything to do with anything? Red Baron, the World War One flying ace, teachers, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff about 
in the book that you could that that loosely comes back to ideas and concepts of this. But the one that really fries my brain is number five. What an interesting character name. I mean, number five comes from this number right here, which is the area code where Charlie Schultz lived. Schultz lived in Sebastopol. I lived in Marin. They're uh, 50 miles apart. Well, actually, less. But the point is, is that, is that he used three and four, these numbers right here, as a way of characters, right? Happiness is a warm blanket. Christmas you know, blah, 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 Linus, Van Pelt. We're seeing stuff. So number five. And look at that number, right? 472. Didn't that number come up somewhere else? Well, it came up 479 over here. But I know that that number comes up in other places. And we'll get into that in, an, in another... Davio Fireside Chat. <laughs> but we know that number, page number five is a really big deal. A really, really big, big deal. Right? Also, there's a whole bunch of other numbers that seem to come up around nine and five as well. But that number, 472, that's a very definitive number, isn't it? That would be an extremely definitive number. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's take a little journey. Let's see if we can't land on something out here that would make you think that that has strong possibility in relevance. Now, what you're seeing here is the very location that that little dog is at. That little dog is out here in this field. Now, I believe if I go like this and then go like, nope, if I go like this, go like this, it does. So you see that word creek? 473. So if I just move my mouse over one little click, it'll say 472. Oh, 473. So right between the E's, right? It really wants to be 473 most of the time. But there it is. There's your 472. When I'm standing at this location in the field, this is where the big dog is. The little image of the dog is right over here. When I'm here and I'm looking this way, it's north 7 degrees. Fascinating. N7, and then I also have the exact number. Now, why between the E's, Dave? What made you think of clicking between the E's to get to that little number, 472? I mean, it's, if you notice it, it's 0472, right? Well, what's, why, how did you decide to do that? <laughs> what made you do that? Well, let me show you. Oh, I know we've really gone down some rabbit holes. I know the chat must be losing its mind. Oh, yeah, this is too complicated. Yeah, it's always too complicated. All right, look at this. You see this line right here between the I and will to the period in cold? Notice that it traverses Creek. I thought, what? It also traverses Meek. No place for me? That's Willie Nelson. It also traversed this. No paddle up your creek. No paddle up your creek. Now, that's John Dos Pesos from what's called a book of uh, Up Ship Creek Without a Paddle. And you will find that it is uh, uh, Parallel 42. It is a book, I think it ends up kind of being what MASH is kind of, MASH is involved in that. You can end up looking at John Dos Paisos from that. The movie MASH, not necessarily the TV series, because you have to kind of go back to when this was being, you know, all that was being made. Um, uh, what do you call that? You know, ugh. anyways, just thought that these were some interesting little details I would share in the process that got me there. Now, the next thing I'm going to come out with is I'm going to take you line by line on how I landed in a place where I'm looking at a dog, right? If I'm looking at a dog in a field, um, is that just a coincidence that I'm seeing this, these, this critter? 
I'm seeing this dog standing at where it says creek from the poem. I mean, there's just so, there's just so many freaking numbers. Look at that. And number five in the book, I know. I mean, it's just a lot of stuff, right? That's just a lot of stuff. But I can cl clearly show you on page 88. As a matter of fact, kids, we should go to page 88. And if you count down, should I do that with you? Yeah, because you guys aren't going to believe me. Let's do this. Um, going to go to a different share. Oh, stop. We're going to go to we're going to go to this one. Bam bam. And it's going to think about it and it's going to do this and then it's going to open photos because I don't know why. So here we are live looking at the book. Let's go to page 88. If I'm right about about 88, then it should somehow mention stuff, right? There should be a mention about what's going on. Well, I always found it interesting that these pages where the word red shows up, right? Figured recovered the word red shows up in these pages usually so look let's see what happens we're on page 88 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 look at that trigger trigger look at that and then in, the, the the horse of roy rogers shows up right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 on 8 we're looking on and we're on page 8 we just heard about 8 o'clock and there's a hint <coughs> All right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Funny, 1, 2, one, two 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th word, 105. What? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, tenths from the bottom. The box is 10 by 10. We are seeing, oh, too much glare. We're seeing 105. Have we left the land of coincidence? I mean, look at all these crazy numbers on this page. B52 shows up twice. I mean, is that the band B52s? Ha, 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 ha. Rock lobster. You know, maybe this is uh, hinting at something. You know, look at this word, you know, red shows up through here. I mean, there's all, you know, you're, I'm giving you guys all this stuff to see if you can't find it yourself. Okay? So, what a trip, right? I mean, it just blows me away that we're seeing that on page, that on line 21, from the top down, 105. And I'm at 105.42 out there. Isn't that interesting? So I would imagine there's probably some more stuff over here on page 89. You know, interesting, this word canopy, right? You ever think about that word canopy? Here's can, here's C-A, and here's N. Here's O-P, can, O-P, right there. So that's 27. I mean, what do you so to add all these numbers up? And then we just add up the heavy loads? Isn't that fascinating? C-A-N, right there, there's can, right? O, oh, right there. P, you don't even need the Y. You can, if you want to add the Y, right there. Right? Boom, boom. C A N O P Y. Look at that. If, you, if, if we're using this as a piece of paper like an archaeologist would and lay it down on your ground. But I mean, even after. The treasure was found, he said, under a canopy of stars. What's going on? Now, what about what about Trigger, the horse? We just saw the word Trigger. Trigger is 15 hands high. I know it's in here somewhere. Here he is, 15.3 hands high. That's 63 inches. Centimeters. Palomino horse, famous American racer, Roy Rogers horse. The very name of... Willie Nelson's guitar. Well, yeah, but this 15-3 thing, Dave, well, here's page 15, and then you'll notice that line 3 starts with so, and there are 20 first, 24 words between here and there. Whoa. 24 words? starts at, And it starts on line 11? And we know that uh, 11 is some kind of important because it's in the poem, 
it clearly says 1-1 one, one right there. Hmm. There'll be no paddle up your creek is a line 11 as well. And line 11 from the bottom, look quickly down. Huh. Look quickly down. Look quickly down. Interesting. Interesting is nine. Uh, let's see. Um, let me uh, let me try to show you one last thing, and then I'll go and we'll and I, then I can talk to you guys. But I really wanted to get all this out before I started. But you know, just kind of show you the tools and where they where where things landed and what in what I have found, etc. To see if that's not if that doesn't resonate with some people. Okay, so this is. This is what I consider the blaze. It looks like this big dog, right? So all this stuff gets me out into this field, right? So all this information here, the postage stamp, father on the Banco, takes me to, I mean, Banco is, is bench. I mean, look at me sitting on a bench. I'm sitting on a bench. Clearly, that's a bench. And you'll notice that it's the same, the same shape as father on the Banco. Look, see the houses? Same shape, same roof line. Just like home plate, it's the same shape. So, I mean, that's kind of a lot of things that I have landed on that have got me to this place. I mean, isn't that crazy? All right, so here I am looking at this big, crazy rock thing out there. I'm calling it the blaze. Okay, so if you're seeing this out there in the world, and it says, look quickly out. So I'm seeing this. Dog. This is the same rock from two different angles. Same rock as the light comes around it. It definitely looks like a howling dog. And he says, if you found the blaze, and I think maybe I have, I look down and what do I see? Well, here's the blaze. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through it. We're seeing this. Now, when you walk up to the rock, it looks different because when you walk up to it, it looks like that, like you got your thumb out with the gypsies, right? When he puts his thumb up, and look at this. It's right beneath it. When you look quickly down, the quest of looking through all this documentation ceases, and now you're in a field. So now I'm at the bench. Look quickly down your quest to cease. And then you're off on Terry Scant and all this other stuff, which is just the geometry lines, right? So I have found this when you look quickly down. And this is over at the threshold. At, and when you look up, you see that at N7 degrees. What? That's right. We see this at seven degrees. I mean, there's even a. This has been clearly carved, and there's a window. So, so if if this is for a special place, then there must be. Whoops! What have I done? Then there must be something about this location. I mean, wow! We've got three dog figures, right? Three dog figures, and there's three dog figures that show up in the book. And I've actually jotted down the chapters that they are in. And what are we doing? We need to get rid of this. We need to go back to here. So dog chapter is on page 28. Whoa, isn't that like uh, if nine is 28, that would be nickel. Uh, the other dog is on 44, in love with Yellowstone. And it's, uh, so it starts out, my father, my dad, and my brother are where the dog image is drawn or a photograph in Forrest's book. Wow. And the Norman Rockwells, when you go to the Norman Rockwells, that are the matches, by the way, in the book, almost every one of them has a dog in it. In fact, if we are, let's go to the screen, share. What are we sharing? We want to share this. When I share this, oops, that's the wrong one. I want to share oh, this, oh, obviously. So we're going to go to the big movie. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, yes. Yes, I'm close. I'm close. I'm close. We're looking for a dog. Uh, uh, a dog. A dog. Not just any dog. We're looking for a Norman Rockwell dog, a very important one that was in his, uh, in his drawings. I mean, look at that crazy rock standing out right there. I have way, I have so many... Uh, numbers that totally fit, by the way. The page numbers uh, definitely fit. No, I thought I for sure I had Mr. Dog like right here. Mr. Brown's dog. 
Oh, maybe I didn't put him in here. Oh, I didn't put him in here. So, by the way, this is uh, this is the face of the buffalo head nickel. This would be uh, Iron Tail is his name in that. Now, look at this other one. Doesn't this look like uh, one of the stories we saw in the book right here? I mean, the kids looking away, the kids, fathers, kids looking to the future, fathers looking to the past. Looks like Lassie holding both hats, got the red tie on, can't wait to go to school, roll your own cigarettes in the pocket, September 25th. Fascinating. And he's got to stop the train with the red flag, sitting on the old, you know, on the on the bench of the freaking truck, on the on the runner of the truck. I thought that was, you know, really giving us a hint right there. Old man Groucho Marx. <laughs> um so yeah, so I was looking. Oh, I was looking over here. There was one other drawing. I don't know if it's here. Uh, looks like I don't have it in here. There's more information. Clearly, tons more that I can show you, but I think it's best to kind of um, just kind of give you that much at a time because it can be clearly overwhelming. I did not see that dog uh, at first at all. No, sir. No, 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 no. Uh, that dog really was not easy to see. It clearly did not jump out at me like right away. <laughs> Definitely, you know, it took me many trips here. I saw the window first day. I go, wow, look, a window rock. You know, when he said he had his feet in the window and he's listening to music, I'll go, wow. So let me face this and then look left. I mean, he kind of gives you these 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 uh, uh, instructions because he's did he talks about uh, on that page left uh, to look left. Um, okay, so I will definitely show you more stuff as we go, but I wanted to kind of see how you people reacted to this before I kind of uh, show you more. Um, this is a, a lot. <laughs> um, the order on, in which you are... This is a really big deal. I can't tell you how big of a deal this is. If you think about it, he has given you... He's anchored you down. Look at these numbers over here. Look at look at this 64. 64. That is page uh, 13. Let's verify. Page 13. Uh, page 13. You know, socks the cat. Yet another important deal, right? I mean, because... We're looking at the cow, and oh, it just goes. It just socks the cat. Forty-two. Okay, so here we are, coming on to thirteen. Uh, first of oh no, it's page sixteen. No, 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 I'm wrong. I believe it could be page ten. Is it ten and thirteen? Yeah, because it says six and four. Right, here it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13th line on page 10 says 6 and 4. <coughs> so what's the big deal about 6 and 4, you may ask? Uh, 6 and 4. That is the size of three photographs through the book. 4 inches by 6 inches is the photographs in, on three pages in the book. Do measure, do find them, one of them father on the banco. Interesting that that has little circles all around the image itself. So he's clearly telling you to go to this particular deal and look at six and four, 64 being important. We know 21 is important, that's father on the banco. So look at those numbers all across there. Number five refers to Charlie Brown. So we've gotten just the craziest numbers ever right here. <laughs> I'm going to do a screenshot. I think I can do a screenshot. Yeah, we'll do a screenshot just of, of these numbers right here. Just trippendicular, right? All right, so, so I just wanted to share 
these things that I have found, which taken me to a place which you're seeing dog images, which show up in the book. Should I sh remember, remember how I started this off with hound on page seven, right? And what, how, and what relevance is that, Dave? What are you doing talking, showing us a hound? I believe it's, uh, yeah, because think of N7. Clunky noises outside. So let's go back to see if it's going to work. It's going to work, but then I have to turn some things off because it does that. I don't know why. Quit. Spam. All right, so here we are. Here is Hound at the very bottom of the page. What a trip, you might think. So how does that? That's not where it is in reality when you're there. You know, what's going on? Let me... Uh, let me let me show you what we got here. So here's our hound. Right? Now where that hound is for it for N7 to make sense, you have to look at it like there's the hound. This would be the little canyon that I'm at, and you're at this end. Now watch what happens when you flip this book over. Look at that. Right there it says four zero. Suddenly it says forty. And then we've got these triangles, three triangles. Or is that alpha, alpha, alpha? I mean, we got these, you know, or is that delta? Didn't he say something about D? I mean, isn't that interesting? The book looks very different when you flip it upside down, especially when he goes 40 again right there. Now, I'm wondering, is he trying to sell us something? Here's, here's where 79 is. 79 again, right here. Just thought this was really interesting that it says 4-0 with the hound being right down over there. So remind, you know, I gotta remind everybody, I did not find where the treasure was. Right? I have found all these amazing hints and everything, which totally line up, you decide, to to a place. But out here, where uh oh, what happened? We are constantly going over here. Alright, so here I am in this field. And you can't see it. Okay. So here I am in this field, right? And it's a big face. This is how you find it. This is what it looks like when you get there. See that big cross? So as you leave, well, I haven't, sh I haven't showed you exactly how I get to this place in Medicine Bow out here, but you're seeing that this big cross, because you know that's come up, a big, you know, 10 has come up, or a big cross. I mean, we start to... Uh, Home in on, well, here's Fort Fetterman, FF, right? And then we start to see this face starts to emerge more and more. And then we have this, this just like on Father on the Banco, we got that crazy, we got that crazy roof deal, right? I mean, look at that. So images, that, you know, images get you. You know, big images from here get you there. But this does not look like a big howling wolf until you're standing out there. So it clearly has got this created to where you have to go out there and see this thing, right? Blah, 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 blah. There is a lot more to see in this image. A lot more. A lot. As a matter of fact, we're going to put something in the middle of your screen. It's going to be tricky. Now, you see this right here? I don't think I can make it any bigger. But look at that. See the cowboy hat? Look at that point. That's a brim of a hat. Look at the two ears on his horse. So you got a cowboy sitting on his horse. How about that? Maybe like Electric Horseman, the movie from Redford? Right? Because that was all about horses and letting them run free. Perhaps he's hinting around like that. Isn't that interesting? There's more little goodies like that in this image. Well, all right. That's enough of this, I think. I, I hope that's, that's you know, creatively gotten your attention. <laughs> that's creatively uh, wetted your whistle to look a different direction. Um, I'm kind of applying the Susie Fenhaven style of, you know, let's look at stuff. And, and what is this? And could this be something? And uh, maybe this is something, maybe it's nothing, but it's worth a look, right? So that's kind of what I applied to all of this was 
What? Oh, oh, uh, oh. Wetted your whistle to look a different direction? Oh my god. Um, I'm kind of applying the... <sighs> That's the worst. So, um, I'm back over here. I get to see the chat, see what you're all are talking about. And, you know, I, I know that I'm the fringe. I am clearly the guy on the edges coming up with, the, you know... <clears throat> Ask yourself, what is he trying to tell me? Yes, exactly. He is trying to confirm a location that I am at. And why would he be taking me to this place? Right? And there's clearly cabins there. Carpe diem, right there. Boom. Seize the day. Day. 24 hours. 24 lines in the poem. Hours, time, part of map finding, part of, uh, of, of finding your way around out there. The fact that we're seeing stuff like that cannot be a coincidence. What is, who out there did this, and who, how does, what does Forrest know about the natives who did this? Is this the Lakota Sioux dog soldier? Is this uh, Crow Dog? There are many Native American names with dog. And why dog? For Dog Star? Clearly, this would be where you can see the Dog Star. Really a big deal, Cirrus, in the sky. So I'm wondering, beyond just the treasure he was really trying to show something that was in this location so that's why I'm thinking maybe dog star um, uh, things like that you know what I mean um, I'm reading chat as fast as I can here hi Bill uh, dog Jack all um, rowdy excellent looking glass there you go we're looking through the looking glass indeed uh, bring a net uh, browsing around? Yep, having a look around. Uh, Aurora, oh, peace. I mean, FF threw in everything about Rocky Mountains. Uh, looking at us, many times raise the internet. My browser stopped. Must be rested. <laughs> rested root. So those are the uh, those are the ideas that I'm that I that these are some of the tools I am using to find certain things or find things that take me to somewhere. By the way, you'll probably notice that I'm not operating on a belief um, well it got down to 47 degrees in here I think it's time to get some heat going so anyways um, I really want to let you know that this isn't based on well I feel this has got something to do with the house of brown no uh, I'm showing you how um, uh, for instance the uh, like the board of education or if I haven't shown that yet why well, I'll well, we can do that real quick Let's do that real quick. Let's go over here to the Brave browser. It's a very brave browser. We're going to go over here. Uh, and we are going to get this stuff out of the way. We're going to go here. And we were going to say, uh, watch this, Brown versus the Board of Education. Uh, now you're going to notice that right away there's some numbers. Uh, 483 is the big one, but 347 that's a big deal number it's a huge deal number um, if you apply 347 degrees to the shrine in Colorado you clearly land out there in Wyoming all right now what does he what do you mean Dave um, Oh, let me, uh, I'm getting tired. I gotta turn on the heat. Uh oh. That can ran out of gas. We'll turn on, we'll do that in a second. Alright, let me finish this up. Let's finish this up. Let me show you real quick. Let me get over here. Let's click on this thing. Click on this thing. Uh, this is probably, yeah. Oh, there's the one drawing I was looking for. Funny how you find it when you don't want it. So I'm feeling the pressure. So I want to show you 347 degrees from the Will Rogers Shrine in Colorado. What? That's right. Board versus the uh, board versus the Board of Education. So what are you seeing? Here's the shrine in Colorado. This is 340 degrees. Uh, this number is slightly off. It should be 252, by the way. Um, and that would take you to the pointy rock that I just showed you in 
Wyoming. So Brown, right? Brown takes you to where the pointy rocks are in Wyoming. Coincidence? Yeah, you guys are going to have to uh, think upon that. But that's that's a really good basic layout of, of a bunch of parts. Now I'm going to work on making it more digestible, but it's a lot of information. And, I, and I'm struggling on how to convey all that information. So this is what we got so far. It's just going to get more and more refined. Um, the tools are important. Um, I think I just really wanted to show the tools and how to apply them. Periodic table, compass, um, make your own index, your own glossary, super important. Um, you definitely want to apply uh, a few other items, I would imagine. I definitely think it's important to look at closely your postmarks. Um, you've got to have a compass. And you definitely want to do your own numbering of page 15. Woo -hoo! Page 15. Remember how I said 9-5 was important? Well, look where it says 79. It's the ninth and fifth word. So, yeah, 9 and 5 becomes really important. Remember? That's the where you actually find 95 shows up with Charlie Brown. So, I would imagine... He's trying to show stuff like Charlie Brown because he grew up with Charlie Brown. And oh, by the way, it premiered in the Saturday Evening Post. So this would be my first way of doing it. This would be um, the Will Rogers Institute. And you're seeing 347 degrees out there in the world, which gets you to or from this building right here. Now, see how that looks like with the thumb in the air? You know, your thumb in the air on uh, gypsies? It's got that kind of a look. So this height, this building is a little bit of what you see out there in the field. This shrine, Temple of the Sun. Right? Don't just isn't this a lot of things? I think this is a lot of things. Definitely want to use Definitely want to use this. <laughs> the Greek alphabet, right? It definitely shows up. This is in Wikipedia. Everything's pretty much in Wikipedia. And the Look at the the is a circle with a line through it with a value of 9. And then you have pi and t and all these other words in here. And k, isn't all that just kind of interesting? E is 5. Huh. So those are the tools. There you go. I think y'all get back to me. I really want you guys to use those tools and apply them in your search and see what you, where and how things come up. I mean, this is a lot of information. It's what it is. Forrest said it was difficult, but not impossible. Um, I definitely think he was hinting like on Scrapbook 252, I think it is. I really keep saying that. I, I might be wrong. But 252 is the one where he talks about Willie at 61 degrees. Um, there's a few other things on that that scrapbook that seemed like he was hinting at this. Oh, and definitely in Too Far to Walk, which, by the way, is a normal book with an index, with chapter numbers. I mean, you can compare Too Far to Walk to Thrill of the Chase and go, what's missing in the Thrill of the Chase from Too Far to Walk? A normal book. Right? How come Thrill of the Chase isn't like Too Far to Walk? Isn't that a relative question? So these are the directions and paths that Davio has gone down. Oh, let me let me pop in and see what you all have to say. <laughs> Before I throw this out, because I do have that window still up. Hey, I do. Look at this. Ken Marla, ask yourself, what are you trying to tell me? Yes, I saw that. Um, I'm grumpy. I can dig it. Well, this is something to ungrump you. <laughs> a little ungrumpiness is to do a little bit of research this way. In something never said or proved. People tend to believe in something never said or proved. Wow. Ah. See, never seen and proved. Well, yeah, I mean, the whole belief is to believe in something that you cannot see or prove, right? And that's why I thought it was important to not um, um, pursue a belief. I mean, clearly, on page, uh, I mean, I mean, that really is. This is a finding, as from what I'm told. The seventy, the word seventy-nine is actually on the seventy-ninth. Is the seventy-ninth word from the bottom? Now, 
those are findings. Those aren't beliefs. Right? So that's actual information. This is, um, and then you can back up stuff like periodic table information. I mean, it's on page, when you're looking at Y's and it shows up on that page number, I've got to think you've left the land of coincidence, right? If we're looking at Y's, right there by my big black finger, we are clearly seeing 39 and 21. The absence of chapter numbers is going to be relevant, Father on the Banco being 21. So going to page 39, and the eighth word is eight. Going to have to say that is a finding, that is a fact, bold, P15. Got to think. Stuff like that matters. I mean, especially since 79 is gold. And we got to figure gold is a big hint, right? So those are big chunky things that are solid that one can use to go through the search and land on something, right? So just thought I'd put all this out there. So what y'all think, a little bit of stuff to kind of mill around, knock around. There you go. So that would be, that's Davio's idea of what I have found within the thrill of the chase, etc. So I'll give you, I'll give you more if y'all ask for it. But I think, I think a man who has put this much work into it has left something behind. Or if he had it pulled, he has asked someone to leave something but was there. Gold was in the box. Yes, the gold was full. The box was full of gold. Gold is relevant in the chase. Everything in the box is a, a clue or a hint. That's what because it's special and that's why it's there. So, would a man who spent 15 years putting this beautiful thing together leave nothing behind? I think there is something left behind. Um, I think there. I don't know. I, its value probably is is that that it proves you were there. Oh, and Melinda's saying it was not pulled. So you're believing that this this 20-something-year-old person has gone out and actually has found this treasure. I certainly hope this is true. Um, I I have tremendous doubt that Mr. Finder is actually... Hey, Capro. Capro, you should see some of this stuff. It's It should be interesting to you. Um, I'm the guy saying that Forrest paid somebody and he wouldn't have had Shiloh go out to remove the treasure so his family is safe, knowing that the end was near for, for Deer Forest. And that seems like the, the smart thing for that man to do. Now, um, if Forrest sent somebody out there to retrieve that chest, would he have asked that person to leave something back? So that's, well, you... You gotta late. You gotta see it from the beginning, Capro. But let me let me show you something. If you have your book in front of you, let me show you something because you you do not you you're strong that this is not relevant. But let me show you something, and let's see what you and you and Cal have to say. Uh, I I don't want to be redundant in this little video, but there's only 24 people watching. So look at Wise. If you've been Wise, Y S, right? Now if I'm right, Capro, you would want to go to page 39. Let's say. And on page 39, you would probably see some evidence about why. Well, sure enough, on page 39, the very first line, the eighth word is eight. And what do you know? 88 is the weight. Right? Just heavy load. Okay, I say. So there's there's more than that but i thought that was enough to get you kind of going down that path i mean p15 on page 15 is actually p15 on here so i've i've gone over you know in 79 is actually gold on the periodic table so and then you know gold is the 79 79th word is actually the 79th word on page 15 so this happens over and over and over throughout this book i can't believe that that's just a coincidence. Uh, I spent almost zero. But did you not connect it to the book? I mean, 
they're spending a year on it, but did you not see how it connects back? Um, I can show you where uh, 39 is relevant in this field right here. Um, this is, there's 39 right there. So 42, 39 puts you in this location. And what do you see when you're in that location? Well, there must be something out there to make you think you're in the right place, right? And when I see a dog that looks like Willie, a hound, I'm going to think that maybe I'm in a place that's not just a coincidence. So I have a lot more on this that we can do. It's a lot of information. Nobody really wants to dive into the information. So it's just all about how you, uh, how, how, uh, peace, he never advised. Peace! Yes, at your own risk. I'm not sure anyone enjoyed this say that. Say I was fake. What? Yes, at your own risk. Why not? Peritable sure does make it more exact. Right. Exact. Um, exactly. Take you right to a very, very, very specific place where you're seeing visual references like unmistakable, especially on page seven, the last word. Now, what's important about page seven? Well, N7 on the periodic table is very relevant because it shows up on uh, postmarks. Right? And we know postmarks are really important because, well, Bramble and Pam put up the very video from a while back where he said they were not an accident, right? Well, here's N7 and page N7. And when you look at North 7, that's the compass heading that I'm on to see Mr. Dog. So I would imagine things like that are going to be relevant. So I have a lot of information. I can show you how all, everything, where things land from the periodic table to using a landsick compass to Fenway Park. All these things become very relevant, right? I mean, when you're seeing uh, the inside number as 23, and that's where the chapter of the gold is, and the outside number in degrees is the page number. So, seem to mean something. Yeah, the timestamps are radically critical. Um, I can clearly take you to a location where all these things like You know what? I, I And I kind of went through this in this video. I think... Kpro, if you were to watch some of these things and, and get back to me, I, I clearly can show you a place worth visiting. So, what would be the relevance if Forrest had it pulled, which is a great doubt right now. You know, it's two, two worlds. Mr. Finder is real. Mr. Finder found it. Okay, cool. Um, if Forrest paid somebody to retrieve it out of there, would Mr. Forrest, who spent such a big deal of his life and love in making this, would he have left something behind? And because I'm seeing dogs out there, and he has a great love for Willie, would he have left his dog tags? This is where I'm at. I think Forrest would have left his dog tags because there would be that would be the one item that would tell us this was clearly Forrest fed. There's going to be a number on there that's going to be relevant to Mr. Fenn, and only his family would know this number. So you could take it. You could take those dog tags, which probably have the others. You know, a matching set could be with someone like Shiloh, or to the McCracken Museum, and you would be able to verify that this indeed is not fake dog tags. I mean, it's it's entirely likely Mr. Fenn has left something like that out there to know so so in other words it's just for finder love and not gold madness right the insanity of the people looking for you know the gold fever that it that, that grabbed everybody this would definitely be a way of avoiding all that right this the search goes on so what i'm saying is that I think it's not over until we have found the location. Mr. Finder clearly isn't going to tell us anything. This guy is going to go sell the box. It means nothing to him. Um, the story on how we get there is not important to him. Um, these things are what are, are communicated. He's wandering around for 25 days. Okay. I have yet to do this, but I got a feeling. If one was to print, print, mind you, what the finder has just put out in the last medium, 
I get a feeling if we count paragraphs, count lines, we will see, see some very interesting coincidences, let's say, in the document. Just saying that it might be possible. Remember, I predicted he was going to come out on 923 with an announcement. I came out with that idea that this, and that's based on, and I, and I, it's, it's in one of my videos. I should probably sample that part out and put it up. So, 923, nine clues. Nine's important on the periodic table because I believe it is, oh, how about that? It's F. And then 23, 923. 23 is V, as in 5. So, again, we get 9, 5, if you want to look at it that way. Or 9, 23. 23 is the chapter that the gold is in. Just a coincidence. Now, how did I come up with these numbers? It is one of the postmarks. It is also lines up as chapter, importance, number, blah, 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 nine clues. Ninth year of his life was a big deal. That's the year he did not go to Yosemite or Yellowstone. Nine is the jersey number of Ted Williams, which is Fenway Park. So there's a bunch of little nines that matter. Number nine, Beatles, straight on to the Beatles. So... I'm thinking that the next time we would hear from said finder would be neither on 11-11 or maybe something in the 12s because 12 was a big deal for Forrest, like 12-27, you know, when he got married. I've got, I haven't really thought about it a lot, but I got a feeling we could probably predict the next time we hear from said finder. Possibly, right? These matter. Look at that little number in there, that 0 39. Zero 39 is crazy relevant. Look at it. When you blow this up, he's really talking about November. Look at that. There's 11. So 7 11, and we've got north. What does it say? Is it Thursday? Is it really Thursday? No. When you actually go to this date on that time, it's not. So this is a hint to make you go do research. Much more going on. Main Street? If you recall, there, there's another street that has third, that goes. Uh, uh, 12, 13, no, 13, 14, Main Street. So, the little tiny subtle things that people wanted to roll over are what's important. That's where I'm at. So, oh, I'm not looking at anything here. I'm sorry. Just trying to focus. He played a number on us. <laughs> Love that. Aaron Strong! And 27 divided by 9 by 3 is 9. Ooh, Aaron, nice throwing some numbers out. Didn't even think about it. Division is definitely a way. We have been divided, conquered. It's all about the gold. F didn't get that. And I don't think the family does either. Searchers need closure. Yes, in my opinion, the searchers absolutely need closure for sure. And from everything you told me, Miss Miss K Pro, the family has nothing to do with this henceforth forever on. I do not disagree. I do not disagree at all. Um I'm wondering what one does if you do find those dog tags. What would you do with them? Take them to McCracken? You can't take them to the family. Family won't care. So the McCracken is the only place I can think of that has much of his legacy lying around. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Maybe yes, maybe no. Anyway, hey, I got some Aaron Strongs on there. Hey, Aaron, remember these days? Whoa! Remember that back in the day? Back in the, yeah, back in the day. Yeah, anyway. <coughs> Aaron, being a sports guy, would, would really relate to or understand Fedway Park, Ted Williams. Guy's name is Forrest Fenn. Thinking Forrest that Fedway Park might have something to do with it. The red seat, 20. I mean, that is the red seat, 42. 42 is a really important number. And his jersey number, hey, number nine, knocks the ball out to 500 feet. Gonna have to say there's some relevance to this. Just thinking that's probably real. Knocks it to seat, 21. Seat, bench. Banco, father on the Banco is 21. This is C21. Y'all must see that there are some subtle differences here, or references, right? All right, well, at some, K, at some point, K-Pro, I'd love for you and Mike to, to grill me on this and stay on topic that these items are taking us somewhere, right? And I believe they are actually taking us to, you know, a, a field where we can actually uh, see you know, latitude and longitude. Clearly 42 is one of them. It has to be. Why? That's the way to the box. Think about it. This is a box filled with gold nuggets. He could have made it weigh anything he wants by adding rocks. 42 is an extraordinarily important number. 
he made it weigh 42 pounds, right? By adding little gold nuggets. So yes, I definitely think there's some relevance to that. Means Jackie Robinson. See, that was the first thing I thought of, Aaron. Is is Jackie Robinson the great, you know, the first black baseball player? Whoa, in Major League, he put up with more shit than any human being alive. I mean, he clearly is for two people to know. I can dig it, Mister Mister Forty Two. Hank Aaron, I mean, that guy is, I mean, this, that was clearly a movie that had to be made. Uh, Jackie Robinson, excuse me, I, keep, I didn't mean, Jackie was a massively big deal. I mean, he paved the way for number 24, Willie Mays, who makes the big left-handed catch in, um, well, Goldgate, not Goldgate, but uh, Candlestick. Uh, so we're, we're used to him. 42 is a really big number. Think about think about that number, K Pro. Think about that number because that is part of the latitude and longitude that I am at. Okay, I'm at 42105. 105. Well, what's 105? Well, besides a page number, it is the other, you know, it's the latitude and longitude, right? So if you go to 4239, and there's that 39 on the postage mark, and then if you think of cancer, what is cancer? There's a big C, right? Well, cancer is also represented by 6-9. The yin and yang, 69, because uh, I believe the crab in cancer, the uh, stars, is represented by 6-9. So that's 1-0-5. And Capro, why, why 1-0-5? Where do I get that number? Well, this place right here, the, the Temple of the Sun, exists because... Wiley Post, the inventor of the pressurized suit, the blinking light on the dashboard, this guy invented that. Yeah, he's like one of the big fathers of aviation. Also flew around the world at that altitude. He is a very, 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 very big deal. Well, because of him, we land in, well, I'm looking for, I'm looking for Mr. Mr. Post's airplane. The wing number or tail number, because he's always telling us to look at the tails, right? Look at the tail. Well, why look at the tail? Well, because Mr. Wiley Post, his airplane number is 105. That's right. His tail number, like dogs wagging their tails in these images all over the freaking place. Now I'm trying to get to this. Here he is. Here's Wiley Post. And his wing number or his tail number, if you'll notice, 105. That's one place we see it, right? Okay, yeah, Pearl Harbor was obviously a big deal. Clearly a massively big deal. So here we have we have 105. There must be more than one place we see 105. For instance, I'll show you where, Capro. I hope you have the book. Okay, if you've been wise, wise is 39. Here's the 39. The just a heavy load on Wise is 88. Go to page 88. Count down to number line 21. You will see the number 105. Okay? I'm hoping that resonates with you because the other one is really hard for most people. Now, Aaron's going to understand this. Anybody with hearing problems knows the word decibel. Deck as in 10 and bell. Decibel. Decibel, decibel, right? Now, what's important about decibel? Well, if you'll notice, if you listen and hear, that would be the measurement of sound, right? What does it say? So, uh, so hear me all and listen good. Hear me all and listen good. Hear and listen. Decibel, which is represented by Aaron's going to put it out there, begins with the sixth month. Nice, Aaron, which is also interesting. Ooh, Sammy Hager didn't like driving 55. I can relate. But nonetheless, decibel, dB, periodic table, dB is 105. 105 dB. And then there's page 105, which is another day. Okay? Thinking that that's a few things that kind of get you to 105. Oh, here's your glossary of the book which is extraordinarily relevant you gotta have this 
So where does 105 land on? Well, it starts with a big W. When it came to civilian life, blue jeans and hush puppies. Well, that's where you're seeing the painting on the wall of a woman playing a mandolin. You know, music, sound, playing sound, decibel, you're hearing it. 105 is decibel. So it's repeated twice. You're seeing a woman playing a mandolin. You're hearing the mandolin. That is sound. Sound is decibel, like bells are sound, right? So 105 is DB, right? And then it's got a weight of 268. Yet another thing to go through. But right there, that's just, a, you know, Wiley Post, airplane, 105, dies with Will Rogers. This guy puts up the tower, Temple of the Sun. Well, excuse me, the Shrine of the Sun, which is on Cheyenne Mountain. And look at the address, 4250. Okay. Few, just a few things there lining up, eh? Just thinking maybe there might be something. And oh, by the way, they play music there. All kind of freaking music. All kind of music. It's a bell tower. Like he's making bells. This is a shrine. There's, 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 you know how people keep looking in a cemetery? Here's your cemetery. There's actually three people buried here. Is it two or three? I think it's three. There's a mausoleum there. So Penrose, by the way, this goes up in 1937. Forrest drove past this. It's part of a zoo in Colorado on Cheyenne Mountain on the Penrose Estate. So when you're here looking at this, when you when you look at this down here, this is a, this is a, a all compass headings, right? So five stories with a flag on top. So you're seeing this crazy little rock deal, which is just like the crazy little rock deal out in Wyoming. I mean, look at that. Are we not seeing a similarity in crazy little rock things sticking out of the ground out there? Look at that. Look at that thing sticking up. That's just like putting your thumb up, you know. On gypsies, where he puts his thumb up in the air, page 42. 42, that's right. The gypsies, where he's got his thumb in the air, is actually on page 42. Are we putting, and then I'm looking at a bench. I am at a bench. You know, bench. Bonko. Doesn't this resonate with anybody? It's just me alone on an island. My confidence is off the chart with this. So I hope, you know, K-Pro, I hope you're still watching yeah, the thoughts. But you show, you can't connect our thoughts too much in the poem book, etc. But I like it. What? like your thoughts, but how? Show how, what? You don't see how. But you show how we can connect our thoughts too much in the poem book, etc. But I like it. I don't understand that, but you like it. So I am showing it or I'm not showing it. How's my aunt? Hi, Melinda. She's passed. That's why we're doing this. I'm still here, so there are a lot of us. Yes, we got 28 people who are still here. Yay. Um, that's a lot of information. Um, I'm showing you how it's tied to a to a to to GPS numbers, to a location. Then the stuff in the location is also tied to the book. I, I, I don't. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try one more time to show stuff in this in the location. I mean, I've got posts. I've got wooden posts that were holding up barbed wire fence. So I would imagine that's par partially why he is showing posts. I got a feeling the dog tags are on a post in that field. I mean, Wiley Post is the guy that crashed the plane with Will Rogers. And his airplane is 105. 105 is the place we are, we are at in the field. I can show you more footage of the field and the bench and the dog and other kinds of items in the field. What is your expectation of what you would find in the location? When I showed up there, I thought I would see something in rock. And sure enough, I'm seeing big, tall, crazy, howling dogs. And he shows up three times in the book. 
and I have three angles of a dog, and the pages jive to where I'm at. That's... I guess it's not enough. But I think there's a chance in November to get out there. Yeah, Aaron, I'm going to drive out. It's snowing like a fucking... But I'm going to go out there. You know what? I think the next thing I'm going to do... Oh, wow. i got to get the heat on. It's getting cold in here. Is I'm going to... Um, wind post to general. Mm -hmm. So... No, bud. Let me help you. I'm not sure what that means. Too many plane crashes. Yes, I could for sure thought he was referencing many plane crashes because he crashed, so therefore that would be something that would be a hint, right? I mean, uh, two people died. The two Alaskan Nuggets, uh, the two gold Alaskan Nuggets, they died in Alaska, uh, Wiley and Will. Your two Williams, my key words. Uh, died together in Alaska, trying to put together a postal route, nonetheless. Steve Wayne, there is too much focus on too much focus here on what you think the hunt is about. Not enough on the magnificent brain doing this thinking. Focus more on that. I don't know what that means. This is me pouring my my information out that I have found I guess that's my brain and these are the parts and the man and that gets you to when you to a thing like this you're seeing in a field undeniably that's relevant I mean the only reason I'm there is because of the information in this poem in this book in this whole deal so it's not like I randomly found something and then I made it fit to here. I didn't even see the dog part. I mean, all I saw was the window. Right? That little window is rare enough in nature. To have it look like a dog, which I didn't see till the next year I came back, and I'm standing there going, that kind of looks like a dog. And then I look at the photographs, and I look at this other thing and go, wow, what could this mean? Then I find out that Native Americans definitely use the word dog. So I'm wondering if he took us to the thing. I'm the man, and you're smart. Steve, thank you. That is extraordinarily kind. Thank you. Thank you, because I can. You know, much love to you guys out there. So I'm, I'm pouring all this out to you all, so you can use these things. You can print this from Wikipedia. No problem. Um, you can print, um, you know, all this other stuff. I mean, I mean, isn't it fascinating that, 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 Mom, that Mama Thornton, who wrote Hound Dog, her name is May. Is is a uh, is Billy May? I mean, that is amazing. So I'm finding other references around the image that takes me back to words that are in the book. I mean, how many words in the how many words do I have to line up before this is relevant to somebody? Instead of, you know, I mean, look, this is BLM land. That little triangle is BLM land. Uh, I, I, so what this means is y'all with me can work out where it lands. Where is the last place? Would it come down? <laughs> Temporary. Yes, hopefully, Jack Jack, we can actually go back out there. This isn't winter. This is a winter blow. I agree, Jack Jack. Maybe there's an opportunity in freaking November to go back out there without the snow. God, that would be great. I do want to go out there and film this place like I can show it to you in the way that would make sense as opposed to me filming it for informational sakes for myself. Yeah. I mean, you gotta love no place for me. Yeah, I mean, I'm exhausted. I'm gonna take five. Let me relax, calm down. I do this for a distraction because of all the other stuff that's going on, right? But it still leaves you at a frustrated place because of how much of my life I dedicated to making this land. I mean, once I saw a little dog out there and I had these numbers lined up, I pretty much committed full time to working on this. Now, you got to remember, I'm a dyslexic, ADHD, high school dropout 
who is who has an extremely hard time reading. So this was a really big project for me to take on, and to see what to see where it lands. So to have this thing stopped the very week I was ready to go back out with new information, I was beyond devastated. Beyond dev it felt like somebody actually just took it from my hands because of the information that I had figured out. But after talking with uh, people out there and finding out much harassment was happening to the man, I think he had to pull it. You can't go pass away and leave this shit show for your family. That is, that's the only thing that makes sense. The information we're hearing from said finder, that is pure bullshit. There isn't a freaking word that, that this guy has written or has put out that has made any kind of logical sense from a finder. I mean, in any kind of way. At all. The only thing that makes sense is the man who put it out there. And the only guy who could turn it off did. To protect his family. Because he knew the end was near. Now, how do I know this? I'm surrounded by people dying. Okay? I've had... Too many funerals, and some of them know knew it was coming. And so, what I you have, they are always making sure things are done. This is handled. That's handled. Give this away to so and so. Make sure that. Make sure blah blah. They want to make their karmatic plate empty. Have you been working on the Beacon Star or AGK? The AGK thing, I'm having a hard time stomaching because of this. I don't know. I like the Beacon Star, but I don't like the guy who put it out because of the weird stuff he did put out. It really irritated me, but I think it's interesting indeed. If there is the same style as this, where he's trying to dive you into history, then I'm interested. But so far, the, uh, the Beacon Star I find the most interesting. Uh, the AGK thing, I'm not ever heading to Louisiana. There would be never a reason to go that down south. I just never, you know, no. I want to go more north. Uh, I like Montana. I like Wyoming. I like what he's showing us out there. I have never seen land like that for uh, these great lengths of time. Spending most of my um, outdoors life in the backcountry of Yosemite, the, the, the sheer rock walls of Yosemite, that's always been, been um, my solace. It's been like... Um, Self-validation, chest was was uh, the gravy. Yeah, you know, so, you know, Steve, here's an interesting thing, and I think Capro will, will, will dig this, and because as well, I believe, what book i got to stay on top of reading. Ah. Really, all I do is going to... Uh, I know it's awful. People have no idea what... That's, see, there you go, Capro. Thank you. So I, I don't want to... I think somebody should publicly, who knows for us, should publicly come out and say what he was going through. I think Cynthia might know a little bit. I think everybody who has contact with him might know a little bit, but I don't know if anybody actually has the pure, the whole gravity of it. I would love the daughters to actually make a statement of what the family's gone through. We know a little bit from news articles. I mean, just an amazing amount of straight-up harassment happened to the man. So... Uh, Jeff is doing a big hunt, uh, 10K West Yellowstone in spring. He's going to actually put it in, in this. He's going to put it in Yellowstone. Oh, oh, over, not lover. <laughs> Forty in. That's good. I like that. That's funny. Um, so, anyways, K Pro, we'd love somebody to put a show out that would actually explain the harassment that Force was going through and the uh, trouble the grandkids were going through. And I mean, you must agree with me on this. Forrest would never want to put his grandson in harm's way. Having his grandson go and retrieve this would put him in the gun sights of the idiots in the world. So I do believe he had to have paid someone to go and retrieve this. Or a close friend, or a writer, or someone that money doesn't matter to. You know, stuff like that. Someone with integrity in his life, I would imagine this would be the, or, you know, lawyers in love, baby. So something like that, I'm sure, is is how he did this. But I don't think he would have, not Shiloh, you know. Speaking of harassment, 
<laughs> what? <laughs> Who's been around? Yeah, there's a guy, Shatterstone, will be there. What? Yes. He lives in... Oh, the, that guy! Oh, the guy who's in... With the, the, the rich cat. He seems like such a nice guy. So down to earth. And the, the log cabin live things. That's what we're seeing. Yeah, that cat. I would, you know... I would love to take... If he's got money to invest into a film crew, he should spend money on this place I got out here so we could film this place and you all decide. That's what I'd love to see. Melinda Cash says no. No to what? We don't know. Can't steal home, bro. Can't steal home. Wow, sliding into home. Can't steal home. That's very funny. Uh, no way he would trust anybody outside the family. In your opinion, I agree. But I think I have people I trust more than family because we have been in life and death situations. Uh, because we have been business together. Uh, they are... I would definitely trust them. I think there are people beyond your family you can trust. No, Jeff. His own Pete's Pizza. He is the one doing the hunt. No. Oh, he's the one. one no, Jeff owns pizza. Oh, cool. So the pizza guy's doing well. Yeah, the pizza guy in Yellowstone should definitely do one. That would be smart because of his location and proximity. Yeah, that would mean business back to the pizza parlor as well. That would be smart. That would be smart. That would be really, really cool. Uh, can't steal home. I really like that. Huh, that's an interesting idea. Steel. Home. Huh. What is steel? Iron and something? <laughs> Who said he didn't wear a mask when they met? Is that confirmed anywhere or speculation? Wear a mask? Who said he didn't wear a mask? That's funny. 10K Hunt in Las Vegas in December. Oh, that's cool. I like uh, I like the outskirts of Las Vegas. The strip is okay for about ten minutes, and then you have to go to the desert. Um, and and I like gambling. I like playing cards. But wow, the strip really looks like it's the land of the lost and clueless. I don't like it. It's for something someone has offered in a mirage. Wow, whoever goes to the Rockies just find the treasure of your own. Why search only for something someone offered you? A mirage. I don't think it was a mirage. I think it was really there. Is there something left since then? That's the question. Uh, yes, I was within 20 feet of it last year. <laughs> so, so Capro in Captain, since you guys are in here, and Rowdy, I'm saying that, here's a question. Um, if Forrest had it pulled, which is the latest little term, would he have left something behind because of uh, all the energy he put into it? Would you do you do you all feel he may have left something behind? Now that's if Forrest pulled it. So, you know, he's he's having some trusted person, whatever that is, uh, remove said chest from location and bring it back. So we saw it in the office. Very cool, all fine. Would he have left something behind? Would Forrest just walk away? from that emotional, spiritual, financial investment into people's imagination, creativity, and getting them outside. I mean, he went, he was very successful in getting people to go out and do stuff. He stopped the gold fever, which has got people breaking into his house, kidnapping his children, insanity, gunplay, etc. Would he have instructed Mr. Remover of Chest to leave a thing behind so good to be an equestrian I think to be qualified as an equestrian you actually need three years on a horse Jack Jack can't say that would be bad luck whoa why would that be bad luck I mean think about it you found an item he has left in said location gratification of poem being solved no gold left something if he did if he had pulled it no he would have pulled it he was done yeah I agree with that I could see how there's it's a to me it seems like it's a it's a question 
because of the energy put into it right there's not i mean the world thinks the world's going to say it's over that's it end of gold fever right but people who've got two three four five six seven years into this and get to know how much energy he put into making this sort of a curse nah i think of a curse of the bambino hmm no time to leave something behind it was retrieved was done quick and got out of there well it's no no one's there's no one there looking over your shoulder you know you 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 put this in your pack you walk out right before you walk out you leave something behind it could have been something not in the book in the uh, box what's with the stick and the scissors what does the stick mean right well, I always thought the stick was referring back to like a dog fetches a stick, for one. Uh, secondly, I thought it was referring to George Carlin, who was saying that just give a kid a stick to play with because I have found little bits of stuff that takes it. I mean, look up and when you look for incredulous, an incredulous face, George Carlin comes up. The person who said flutter by is George Carlin. Um, He's the one that said, just give a kid a stick to play with for fuck's sake. Because he was really on a, a tirade about how these little stupid machines are destroying children. So, that's, that would be, um, that would be my take on these things. And scissors, scissors I thought were for a silhouette. Uh, in that there is a, uh, everything is a, you know, the coin is a silhouette, the profile silhouette. That's why I thought often silhouettes are cut out with scissors I thought there was a hint at that that said it's not said it was not about legacy so it's about getting kids to go out and be it's about well if you you know what Aurora what I've noticed is children have no imagination if it's not a click they don't know in other words we grew up with enough imagination to ask a question to go to a Google search, I'm noticing that kids can't figure out how to work a cassette deck from 30 years ago. They can't figure out the simplest concepts. They don't know how. They don't know what quarter after means. Tell a kid ten till. He'll not know what in the hell you're talking about. There's no round clocks. They're jewelry. It's not how you tell time, it's jewelry. It's this neato thing, but no one's looking at it for time. Time is in your phone. Uh, camera is in your phone. So, will you love me? Will you love me forever? What song is it? Stop right there. That's, uh, I gotta know right now. That is uh, Meatloaf. Don't let your meatloaf. Oh, there it is. Okay, love this music. So Jack Jack is so I didn't see that above it. Best way to find her. He said there's more to come. That's right. What is the said finder gonna do? This hard to believe Yeah, karaoke, Captain Marvel. Very nice. Uh this 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 karaoke this karaoke person who is a finder, what is this karaoke finder gonna do? What can we expect from him? What will he do? Whoa, look at this in Russian. I have no idea what any of that means. Own something, yada, yada, blah, napcake, napcake, something. I have no idea. It's backwards. Paradise by the Dashboard Lights. Yep. Great song. What we need here is some heat. Oh, it's excellent. All right, well, uh, it's really neat outside. Very frozen. Very, very frozen. We need some, we need some heat. Get some heat. Let's get some heat going. These things kick butt right here. Forrest said he's done. It's over. Ain't it the truth?
It is done. It is over. It's done. It's over. Come on. There we go. Hey, K-Pro, it's been fun playing poker with you, by the way. She's probably gone. <laughs> well, there you go. I think it's more impressive when you actually go out to that location. I mean, seeing these pictures and stuff, I think footage from that location is is worth seeing. Anyway, don't burn down your little shed. No. Nope. New Siri, we're okay. Space heater electric, 1,500 watts. You know what's funny, Jack-Jack? Okay, so check this out. Let me see if I can't. Let me get on the right thing. So that's 750. That's like 1500. And you'll notice that there's no sheetrock on anything in here, right? And so it's there's snow on the roof. So I'm a, I'm in a nice box. Uh, currently it's 40 something degrees in here. So yeah, it's a little cold. And when I turn on this little gas heater, it'll get down to 55. So I have a saying that with my wife years nice it is a fun song right on stop right now that's it well kids there you go that was my that's my little brain dump for this afternoon I think I can do a better job in consolidating it consolidating it down to a um, uh, what do you call it a more streamlined bit of information but there's a lot of it uh, and I haven't seen anybody with any kind of compelling location ever out there. Um, yeah, I haven't seen. This is the most compelling information that I've that I have seen. That and, and it's not based on belief. There's no belief here. It's based on the numbers that I find in the book. I use a, a lot of the periodic table as a primer to a code that he's suggesting to that, which gets you a different number takes you to someplace else. That is what I have seen. And I definitely think, and as Forrest has said, the hardest one is beginning where warm waters halt. Because I think that becomes more of a con concept of the word William and then stuff like that. Post-it note. So I like the post. Post-it. Okay. It's a little cold. Yeah. The great concerns for this little kitty I've seen out in the snow. I, I wonder if that kitty is homeless. Because he's, yeah. Anyways, check, check. Love, son. Yeah, uh, semi warm again soon enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, Osai, Jack, Jack, that's the idea. Is I plan on going out and filming all of these things that I have showed you in brief, but I want to show you in a, in a continuous kind of video. So, you have the information and then you see the stuff you guys you know can make the decision how long is a rope um, a rope well when you talk about rope a rope is known as a pitch and a pitch is usually uh, 150 well it's 175 feet so it's an interesting thing it depends on who you ask how long is a rope you ask a fisherman very different you ask a rock climber, it's a definitive amount of distance. It's definitive. It's a pitch. Wolf howl is heard at 10 miles distance. Nice. Got to see the wolf howling <coughs> in Yellowstone. There's a place, uh, where were we? Uh, by where uh, the, uh, the brown cabin is in Yellowstone. They call it, they don't call it the home of brown, but it's, the, it's known as the brown cabin because Ranger Brown was there and they released the wolves. From that location, and that was my uh, that was my buddy Saul, and that's why I went to Yellowstone with him. And there is no way it is there. There is no way it's in Yellowstone. Uh, it's a federal reserve, and um, there's no way you're gonna mess with the feds. You will lose. Period. Uh, it's their park. It's not really American. It's a park. It's their park. It's really, and it's worse in Yellowstone. And it's worse. I mean. 
Yosemite has its own jail. <laughs> they will put you in Yosemite jail, which is pretty, you know, which happens because you camp out of bounds. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff. But there's no way it would be in a federal park. You would lose it. As soon as you said where you found it, they'll come take it away from you. Like that. They will not care how you got it. They will not give a flying fart about any of that. You think I'm kidding. <laughs> you will lose. You will never own it. It was never there. It had to be on BLM land. That's why he told you on page, what is it? Page The same page as the bells. What is it? Page, oh, it's chapter 24. He tells you to go on BLM land. So, all right, enough of this. Let's push buttons and turn this off. And maybe I'll put this together in a more can, can, you know, condensed, cohesive way. I don't know. We'll see. But mostly, um, brrr, brrr. I think everybody should definitely do your own page 15. Count the words. Find out how interesting that is and what it could mean and the other pages that it references. I think that is a way of this complicated thing to take you to the next thing. So, I don't disagree with K-Pro. I definitely think he is done. Now, he is done. I have a hard time thinking he would have not left anything behind. He could have done it in disgust. Yeah, you're right. He could have done this in disgust. They will take the BLM. Dogs howl too. That's right. It's always fun to get dogs to howl. And we have three dogs in the book, right? Page 28, 44, and the other one escapes me in the moment. But I definitely think that is relevant. The dog pages. Oh, I'm going on and on here. Let me get my little information stacked up correctly. My little correct piles. What time is it? Time for poker? <whistles> time for poker. CBS News uploaded a red flag. Oh, geez. Everywhere in the Bay Area is frightening right now. Oh, my God. I've just looked at the... Uh... Oh, no. What have I been missing? So they're going to turn the wi the, uh, the uh, power off in Berkeley Hills, it looks like. Because the Berkeley fire was horrific. You guys... Just imagine a city metropolis with fire and wind going through it. That was the Berkeley Hills, the Oakland fire, you may have heard. They really kind of play it down on the world media. But in the Bay Area, that was as big a deal as the earthquake. Yeah, you know, the earthquake. The, that's a big deal, right? Because, you know, 65 people burn up in that. Yeah, they burned up in the earthquake because they couldn't get out of the houses. They were stuck in cars. It was really bad. Captain! He said that there was a finder. Wow. Why don't I believe FF? I, I do believe FF. I do believe there's a finder. The dog of doom, the howling war. Right. Why am I not... Why am I... Why am I disagreeing with said finder? Because he hasn't said anything that was intelligent yet. And it seems like this little neophyte couldn't have found his car keys, that alone a treasure. So if this finder person is actually listening to me, let's hope this spurs you to actually do something that makes us think you actually have found it. Because right now, uh, the person behind the camera in the photographs seems to be the important thing. I mean, all we have is a photograph of Mr. Fenn in the box. How are you going to prove you have found it without the box if you're going to freaking auction it off? So I don't know. Oh my god. What's this? Oh my bad. If you add up the numbers of the poem, they add up to 32 and 33. What, what numbers? You mean, oh, the numbers that are laying around in the, in the yeah, that's cool. What proper way to come out of this insanity? What is the proper way to come out of this? Well, the, the finder would have to actually uh, say this is the process, show us pictures, show us a little bit of the process, where the information is in the poem, 
Do you think the finder wrote the uh, that article? Yeah. The article. The so there's there's one that doesn't count. It's clearly Photoshop manipulation that showed up somewhere, but the one that's in the medium. I need to print that. We need to count words. What if Forrest had some of that written? I don't know. That 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 article is just really horrible. The photographs are the most compelling thing about the Medium article. The photographs are extraordinarily compelling. They are definitely from that day. They are from that room that day. Is the person doing the writing having a clue how it was found? We have yet to hear any information. Any information at all from the writer of the article. You have the photographs, and then you've got the writer of the article. Yes, they must hopefully be the same person. Unless photographs were sent to somebody to write something, which makes no sense. So there is... I just read, you know, this guy's wandering around for 25 days because he wasn't sure, but yet you're supposed, you would precisely know where to go. I, uh, I don't see... Uh, no, I... I I'm, I'm all for somebody has found it. I'm all for that. Um, but I have yet to hear anything intelligent from this cat. I mean, have you? I mean, the photographs are compelling. You have faith. I. What's faith? Is that God? I don't believe in God. Sorry. I believe in love, people, nature. But faith seems to be contrived by human beings, and so therefore I can't believe it. So, And I don't... I don't I didn't proceed anything on this chase as a belief. I didn't go someplace because I believe it's there. No, I, I deciphered information which got me to evidence that is number and information based. I actually see names of things repeated, so I'm not going on a place because I feel like it would be there. Like I don't feel it would ever be in uh yeah june 5th when the park opens up that's you know a good time so i don't know close the yellowstone park in the car i don't know and no i do not have the gold who does the gold i have would be uh, richness of life if you want to use that metaphor gold is the sun yet another metaphor um, face is the real thing a little birdie told me <laughs> is a real thing yeah faith is a real interesting deal it's been a, a deal that that um, see atheist means you're not a Christian or you don't believe that way that's not who I am because I mean uh, why do people push religion yeah I don't understand that I don't get it Little, to me. little bird, the little bird to me would be uh, Bob Marley, the little bird. That's the only. That's the little bird that I know, and I definitely love that. that all those, all that stuff. The little bird man, stir it up, stir it up. He sings so beautifully. Yeah, I like little. The little bird told me from Bob Marley. I'll go for that. But I can't go to the stand up, sit down, cross cross. I don't like the idea of a, a torture symbol being a symbol of love. I think that's contrived. I like the idea of of the symbol of a heart meaning love. I think that's killer. This is why I paint all that because I think love needs to be projected without the suffering. That's so automatic in life. It's going to happen. It is weird that the treasure hasn't been advertised yet. I thought I would be for sale. Strange that would one, um, ouch, would want to, uh, I mean, wouldn't you want to sell the story in the chest? I mean, somebody, wouldn't somebody want to kind of jump all over that as one thing? Ugh. just don't understand it. I mean, why, if you found treasure, isn't there a story? I mean, just even a, Quick, I mean, so, I mean, there's, I mean, there, there's a story in how you derive to the information that gets you to the location. That seems like it would be at least, you know, one of these people's want to do. I don't know. 
it's a jeep thing but trying to help it's kind of like it's a jeep thing but trying to help you understand that's funny <coughs> blackbird singing in the dead of night take these broken wings and learn to fly all your life we were only waiting for this moment to the student played the student paid what the student paid with treasure for his college yeah that was a waste of money <laughs> hey Galton Melinda maybe you're not seeing it negative of what I'm not being negative realist gotta wait until the lawsuits are done no I would, because they're frivolous and lame there's, there's no fucking point to that in 10 years no disadvantaged child goes sick with cancer no funds disturbed distributed distributed okay peace hmm hmm gonna find something there and I I can dig it I think you can you can have belief in love without going down that other what's the topic this evening Gallatin you know what I was just hanging up <laughs> Well, if you find dogs looking up at the sky, wouldn't that be special? Maybe it was special to the Native Americans who were there. Maybe this is where the Lakota Sioux dog origin comes from. There is something about this location. Why are there dogs there? Why? Why are we looking at dogs? It doesn't make sense to me that... I mean, it makes sense to me if forest would take us to a special place. Then what does all of the uh, what does it mean I mean is, is it a place that he's trying to get a little bit of recognition to for these people that were that were there I mean Cirrus is the dog star stars and all this kind of stuff play into the book we have three dogs in it Willie comes up as his thing We're I'm looking at dogs in this location wonder if there's something about it something about dog spirit absolutely I mean it's called it's called the dog star which is serious and so that would take you back to thousands of years back so there might be something about it that way I don't know it's hard to, it could be it's hard to say but this was good practice so so thank you very much I'm going to go yeah see three dog night um, which is you know Loki what is interesting is that takes you that takes you to Paul Williams. There's your Williams word. Now, Paul Williams is the one who wrote um, Jeremiah Was a Bullfrog, which is right there on our, what we're seeing, frogs. Takes us to Three Dog Night. What is a Three Dog Night? That's a very cold night. Is a Two Dog Night, One Dog Night. Three Dog Night's a very cold night. The Inuit people used to have dogs on them that would keep them warm. Right now, yeah, six degrees outside. Oh, shice. Yeah. Life forms, spirits, looking glass. Dig it. I'm all for that. Yes, I'm all for spirit. Definitely is a thing. I'm all about that. Searchers have not team players. That's right. But we can now because the gold is gone. So now it's more about intellectual property. Intellectual, what is, what is there? What's the, uh, what's the stuff? Yes, they do, Melinda. They are more pure than others. Tool six is brutal, buddy. It's bloody cold, man. It's so cold. I'm glad I got this heater on. Because it's coming up out of the floor. So, yeah, I don't know. I can't probably be out here. Uh, uh, Got to get some money and insulate this little thing. Uh, just yeah. Can't think about it. This is they don't demand things. We'll be in oh by it'll be zero by morning, yeah. You gotta get over yourself. You gotta get out there, 
get out, get out of your own way. No, nope, I don't think I'm in my own way. I think I'm promote. I'm pr I'm showing you what I have found. That's it. As a distraction from the horrible shit that's constantly going around. The only reason. I'm there. So if I pay attention to everything that's going around on around me, I just may as well go lay down in the snow. <laughs> Get it over with. All right, that's enough of this crap. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for stopping by and seeing this crazy idea. I definitely need to get this down into a much shorter, quicker version. And it is too much information. So, uh, thanks for stopping by. Much love to everyone. Um, be safe. Uh, be kind. Be human. Be a, you know, be a human being. Uh, oh, thank you, Silver Thread. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm having a hard time reading. It's a... Uh, it's, too much emotional stuff, so I forced myself into this force fen thing as a intellectual distraction. Uh, can't watch the news, uh, History Channel. I just there's only so much you can look at before you start getting headaches. And the uh, so you know Captain Marvel and all these other names I'm seeing here. Thanks for hanging around, Susie Fenhaven, Gallatin Ghost. Um, have a great night, and thank you, thank you, thank you. Silver Thread, uh, you know, I love what I love the little iconic things you guys do, and Loki, of course. <laughs> Silver Rocks, you know, you guys, I, uh, I just really want to say thank you for stopping in and saying hi. Really, um, this is my little brain dump. Uh, no one to talk to mostly, um, and I go too fast, and so. I really have to do the visual parts for any of this to make sense, so I'm getting better at providing the visual information that goes with the dialogue, which then kind of takes us somewhere. So, kitties in a box. Oh, don't tell me about kitties. I miss my kitty. Yes, and I should stay warm. And you guys all have a great night. Loki, very nice. Uh, committed to insanity. Yes, I've been committed twice. Therefore, I'm committed to insanity. <laughs> She's going to mail me some insulation. Oh, fucking hell. You know, I do need some insulation. I really do. I can probably, I think at a thousand bucks, I could probably insulate this and secure this up, probably. Probably not even a thousand bucks. But my uh, feet are going numb, so yeah. Okay. <sighs> Night, D. Stay warm. Yes, you too, sir. Very good. And Melinda, yeah. I can dig it. Sleep well. Sleep. Yes, I missed that. So much love, everyone. Uh, I, again, I just can't say enough love to everyone. Uh, remember, the big heart symbol is definitely uh, a good symbol of love. Let it reflect back to, to your life as well. Uh, reorganize my notes. Is that what you said? Yeah, they're all laying around. I have to put them, in, you know, put them out there in a better way. All right, so buttons being pushed. Now I've learned a different way of doing that. 